Hello, people of the earth, and welcome back to Quick Save TV. My name is Mike, and top of the morning to you, right? I'm a leprechaun now. What up? Now, today we're going to talk about the weapons in State of Decay. More specifically, we're going to talk about uh, melee weapons, right? And there are three types of melee weapons in the game in State of Decay 2 Juggernaut Edition. And these weapons go as follows. Uh, they are blunt weapons, they are bladed weapons, and they are weapon the heavy weapons, right? They're all a little different, but today I wanted to talk a little bit about stats of these weapons. I know there are some guides on YouTube that cover what are the best weapons, and that's cool, that's good to know, right? But um, for me personally, it's very good to understand what makes weapons tick, how does it actually work? And um, the, really, the only way you understand it is by playing the game a lot and understanding what is a priority for you or not. This particular character of mine has a striking specialization. That's a specialization for bl blunt weaponry. It uh, gives you bl increased blunt knockdown, decreased Grand Slam cost, and uh, allows you to use the Grand Slam ability. The Grand Slam ability is this. Check it out. Yeah. It's an attack in a wide arc that knocks all Zeds down. This attack necessarily knocks basic Zeds down, so plague zombies, um, screamers, um, armored zombies and, and normal zombies. It easily knocks them all down, right? And it costs a little bit of stamina, as you can see. It doesn't cost a lot of stamina at all, right? It doesn't cost a lot of stamina at all for me. Now, but let's talk about the stats. So, um, a particular specialization, this particular specialization increases the ability to knock down Zed. And why is it important? Well, because it's the definitive feature of the blunt weaponry. When you use blunt weaponry against bladed weaponry, and there's a lot of discussion as to what is better, like, my sister swears by bladed weaponry, I swear by blunt weaponry, I don't trust into a bladed. But um, then again, in terms of the special ability, I believe blunt weapons are worse than bladed weapons. If you can hit the enemy one by one, bladed weapons are superb at this. I'll demonstrate what I think about it. So, uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good bladed character, but... So the stats goes as follows. We have impact, dismember, lethality, speed, max durability, knockdown, quietness, and ease of use. What are they? Well, let's discuss. Impact is the st strength of each individual hit. The higher is the impact, the more the zombie will reel from an attack. Right? So the higher is the impact, it, it's, I mean, juggernauts are immune to that, essentially. <laughs> and um, uh, the higher is the impact, the higher is the damage the zombie will suffer from. When you deal, uh, when, when, when you deal attacks with high damage, the zombies will reel back, right? And they will be forced to, uh, they will be forced to recuperate from your attack, and it gives you a valuable time in a fight. Dismember is a usually, it's a typical addition for bladed weapons, but some blunt weapons have it as well. Very few. Here. No, 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 time out. Yeah, some, like one, I think, has it. And it's not a great weapon besides that. Well, anyway, so Dismember is an ability to, excuse me, excuse me, to cut off arms and legs. Especially arms, because you typically don't cut legs by a normal attack. Now, cutting off arms does the following. The zombie becomes a much smaller threat. He's only capable to bite you, right? He cannot grab you anymore. And he overall becomes a debilitated threat. If you can cut legs off, the zombie becomes almost 100% useless. Only if you walk into him, he will be able to bite you. And that's not a good deal for him. Next, the ability, the lethality stat. Lethality stat is the ability to kill a zombie faster. The higher is the lethality, the higher is the chance that you will kill a zombie in one hit, okay? So the we weapons with greater lethality allow you to sometimes insta-kill a Zed with one attack, like Bowie Machete is a great example of that. Yeah, and if we talk about blunt weapons, a lot of them don't have high lethality. Like RTX Crusher has, Bell Club has higher lethality, like double the lethality of other and blunt weapons, but blunt weapons typically do not um, do not easily kill uh, zombies, do not deal a lot of damage. It's also a problem when you're trying to fight freaks, when you're trying to fight a feral, you don't really give a shit about uh, anything else but lethality, you want to actually kill him. You don't want to knock him on your, his ass, and I don't even think if it's possible in this game, I never was able to do that. You want to kill him, and uh, that's rather important stat. Now, lethality... Every zombie, like, there's an element of randomness to it. Sometimes you will fight a zombie and he will have... Um, 
he will just die in one hit from a metal knight stick, even though the lethality is very low. Sometimes he will fight a zombie and he will fight forever. He will take like five, six, seven hits. So I don't know how it works exactly, but I like to think about it this way. Every zombie has a different amount of health. And, uh, you know, if he's low on health, like before I even meet him, maybe he's decomposed to death or something. One hit destroys him. And we always try to destroy the head. So the lethality is your ability to destroy the head uh, before you try to finish the zombie or um, before you try to somehow hit him into anything, right? Or shoot his head. So lethality is an important stat and it's the greatest stat on bladed weapons. Speed. All blunt weapons have moderate speed uh, and some blunt weapons have exceptionally slow speed right uh, when we talk about um, I don't have any of them I always deconstruct them so yeah so blunt weapons have very slow speed compared to bladed weapons and that means that each indi individual swing takes longer time that means that you have to plan a little bit in combat that's not a problem for me but you can't um, you have to be careful when you attack so with blade with blunt weapons it's important to dodge more and be careful. So max durability is uh, the uh, number of hits before your weapon breaks down. It's one of the most important stats. A lot of the bladed weapons have shed durability, like Kama, for example. Take a look at this max durability compared to my uh, Metal Knight Stick. Metal Knight Stick uh, has one of the more exceptional durabilities. But what I'm trying to say here is bladed weapons, even the better bladed weapons, like this one. Take a look at this, Rescue Hatchet. Amazing dismember, right? Very high lethality, incredible quietness, and fun, fascinating speed, right? Still has lower durability than Metal Knight Stick, and that's normal. That's normal. It's it's uh, for the sake of balance, because when you use Kama, you will twice as often kill enemies with one shot, essentially, when compared to Metal Knight Stick. So the max durability is the trade-off that you have to give. They're more delicate weapons, and one of the greatest skills for these delicate weapons is discipline. Discipline for bladed weapons allows you to offset this problem. Here, discipline. Increased stamina, light encumbrance limit, and weapon durability. Increasing weapon durability is paramount when we talk about bladed weaponry. Let's take a look at other stats. So we also have the knockdown. Knockdown is straightforward, right? The blunt weaponry has it. Bladed weaponry doesn't have it. Doesn't have it most of the time. So what it means is... Most of the times, you cannot knock down people on their ass by using bladed weaponry. So, Noodle Knife doesn't have it, Machete doesn't have it, Brush Axe doesn't have it, Kama doesn't have it, Hachi doesn't have it, Tacti Hawk doesn't have it, you see what I mean? Uh, but every blunt weapon has it. Every blunt weapon has it, and it's by necessity. Because blunt weaponry is about controlling the battlefield, not about one-hitting one, one the enemies. Now. What does it mean for you? Well, when you use a blunt weapon, uh, sometimes you will be able to find an opening. You you hit everyone on their ass and you try to reposition, right? With bladed weapon, you try to kill them. You try to kill them. And you can also use uh, some other tools to, to uh, make them, uh, debilitate them, but you cannot knock them down most of the times. Now, quietness. A little bit overrated, in my opinion, because if you get in a fight, chances are it's going to be loud, man. And it's not always, it doesn't always have to do with your weapon, uh, because the zombies, when you try to kite them, so in other words, you're trying to run away from them as to pull them to another position, they can start screaming, much like screamers, and they will attract more zombies. So I think quietness is a little overrated, but in a perfect world where quietness matters, uh, what does it do for you? Well, if you get into the fight... Quiet weapons, there's, there's some very quiet weapons, also from RTX, from uh, Red Talon, um, that allow you to quickly dismantle a bunch of foes without attracting any more. That's really nice, sometimes. But in my experience, it hasn't been so useful. Uh, ease of use is one of the most important stats in the game. Ease of use determines how high is the stamina cost for each individual swing, you understand? Really important, man. Really, really important. This is what allows you... This character also has a decreased max stamina, right? So this is essentially the basic normal stamina in the game. 100 stamina. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, I'm done. No more stamina. 14 hits with Metal Nightstick. 
not a lot. There are ways to expand that, right? I can go, I can go cook a fist, right? That's really nice. You get more max stamina. I can use an energy drink to not, but but the point is, the weapon that is more practical has higher ease of use. There are a lot of better uh, um, uh, weapons in terms of, look at this, right? Oversized mallet. Knock down, right? Incredible. Max durability lower, but we don't care. I can knock them on their asses in one hit, right? Fantastic. Impact is higher, right? But let's say how many hits I can take. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm done. I'm winded. I have to run, man. I'm fucked now, right? So. When you use a heavier, more effective blunt weapon, you have to be very careful with your hits. Uh, that, for me personally, I really like ease of use. I don't like to think about that shit, and I don't like to. I like to have more stamina available to me. So ease of use is one of the more most important uh, stats for me. But I can see why people would use something like this because uh, the oversized mallet, because it's really really good uh, in other uh, aspects because you can knock them down on their asses. But it's not the best example, right? When we talk about this, right, oversized mallet, there's a better choice, right? There is something like RTX Crusher. So it weighs the d double the weight, not five. Um, pounds but 10 pounds um, and um, it has higher lethality higher ma double max durability higher even higher knockdown and three times easier ease of use so what i'm trying to tell you today is it's a bit foolish to focus on um, it's impractical it's not even foolish it's impra it's good to know but it's impractical to focus on the best weapons in the game a more valuable skill for you is to try to understand um, what makes weapons good or bad and try to be able to identify that because look at this There's there's one big problem when you play in max difficulty. Let's see how much it costs me to fix this tire iron Oh, it's salvaging. Let's fix it, right? Let's repair it 58 parts Is it a lot? Yeah, it's fucking a lot. I have 1220 parts Do you know why I have to have 1220 parts because I buy every part I see I never discard any part I, uh, parts I find I try to use weapons before I salvage them. I try to use a lot of them before I salvage them. And because of that, I have a lot of parts. It's not a normal thing. I have a uh, juggernaut, I think. Isn't it? Yeah. Let's just choose somebody else. Oh, yeah. How fun. Yeah, they'll be able to handle them. No problem. But, yeah. So, awful timing. So, again, I am able to do th I'm able to save these parts for other things that I want because I don't spend them on repairing my weapons. The best weapons will need to be repaired at certain point, you understand? And it's not very good. Oh, he's smashing his ass. Come on, come on, come on. Let's let's kick their asses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they just killed him. My people are fucking brutal, man. No wonder some people are trying to kill us, man. We're just out of this world brutal. I need to change my base. Now, back to the topic of today's video. So, it's better to understand what makes good weapons good and try to try to adapt. But I'll show you some examples of good weapons. We're safe, right? We are, I think. So, um... One of the greatest examples of... So let's take a look at Machete. I really like Machete. The combination of higher lethality, higher max durability for a bladed weapon is very good. The ease of use is still very low. Uh, I'm, I mean, I'm very high, excuse me. Uh, Kama is okay, not so bad. That hatchet is a worse Kama in every way, essentially. It doesn't have any benefits over Kama, and it weighs more. Um, one of the greatest ones is Bowie Machete. It's the same as Machete, but it has higher lethality, lower dismember. You don't necessarily care so much about dismember. Lethality is still paramount um, because it can kill enemies in one shot. There's a um, good example. No, that's bad. Cutting Blade is okay, but it's not easy to use. It's not very easy to use. It has higher... Uh, it has a knockdown, which is good. It has good durability. But this can be difficult to use. Check it out. Four, I think. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And she has how much? She has 124 stamina. So it's up to you if you want to use it or not. The uh, current pack called Critical Response Pack is, has some very nice weapons. So specifically, High Angle Rescue Hatchet. When we compare it to Bobby Machete, right? It has higher durability. It has some knockdown. It has incredible dismember. It has lower lethality, lower ease of use, and uh, lower impact, right? Uh, or, or higher impact, higher impact. 
Lower lethality, lower ease of use, higher impact, dismembered, knockdown, and durability. Very good uh, weapon. Maybe it looks better for you like this. Bowie machete, I recommend. Now look at this. Take a look at this one. It's heavier, but it's better in every meaningful way. And ease of use is slightly lower. Lethality is slightly lower. It's a great trade-off, but it costs a lot. It's 750 um, uh, influence uh, weapon. So... Maybe not for everyone. Um, and um, yeah, this is how we think about that. So we try to focus with, uh, with Bladed, we try to focus on lethality, we try to focus on durability, and uh, ease of use. A lot of them have great speed, basically maximum speed. Look at the speed. Right? Incredible. And one thing I haven't mentioned today was that um, um, the um, uh, melee weapons... Um, when you talk about striking weapons, when you talk about blunt weaponry, uh, you can hit several targets at once. It's the same for heavy weapons, by the way. But when you talk about bladed, you can only one, hit one individual target. So it can make it quite dangerous. So let's take a look at this. Nightstick is great, obviously, but I really recommend you to use... Now, tire Iron is not so bad. But a much better version of Tire Iron is uh, Pipe Wrench. Pipe Wrench is, I swear by these things, man. Look at this, the combination of factors. But his baton is shit. <laughs> it's never good. Uh, nail Puller is very good, too. It's a worse uh, Pipe Wrench, but it's really, really good. Crowbar is also okay. Again, it's a worse Pipe Wrench, but it's good. It's decent enough. Bell Club. Not good. <laughs> RTX Crusher is one of the best, man. If you can find some Red Talon Merchants, it's a great thing to pick up. Uh, then, Transmission Maze, uh, it focuses more onto... It focuses more onto knockdown and durability as opposed to other things, but RTX beats it in every meaningful stat, so it's not so good. But it's even more shocking because Transmission Maze is something that you craft, uh, but it's very shocking to me that it's so bad. Now, Metal Nightstick is good. It's... I would say it's worse than RTX Crusher, but it's light. It's very light and it's very good for a beginner fighter. It has lower impact, lower lethality, lower knockdown. Uh, it has a little more durability and it has a little higher ease of use. It's a very good gun and you can, uh, oh, sorry, weapon, and you can consistently buy it from the uh, seller, from the bounty hunter. Uh, and I think we've discussed this topic to death. I hope this discussion was helpful for you in some way. If it was, don't forget to put a like on this video and subscribe to see more. My plan still remains the same. Uh, I haven't shared it, but now I can. I want to make 10 videos, hopefully one, a video a day about State of Decay 2. And I would really like you uh, to be able to benefit from them. So, as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a new video. Bye-bye.